So a lot of people think that they don't have a sweet tooth because they love these things, you know, kind of that crunchy, salty stuff that is, well, pretty delicious, irresistible. Okay, so can you have a sweet tooth and not actually be eating sweets? Absolutely, you can. I have this little saying that I, I say to people sometimes, there's nothing so important you can be saying right now that I can't wait for you to finish chewing. I was just thinking about when I was finishing chewing and talking to you. <laughs> so if you look at all these crunchy, salty, wonderful kind of, you know, crispy treats and things like that, a lot of people will chow down on a bag of them and think that because there's no sugar in it that they don't have a sweet tooth. When in reality, these foods convert into sugars in our body and can react and act in the body the same way that having a cupcake or a cookie can have in the body. So you might be wondering why you got the little kind of the sugar belly and not understanding, but you don't eat sweets. But if you have a savory palate and you're still consuming um, things that can turn into sugar in your body, or like the other day, I saw a packet of beef jerky. I actually was traveling, I purchased it and, um, and took a bite of it and spit it out because it tasted like candy. A 28 gram bag or 28 gram serving had seven grams of sugar in it. It tasted just like candy to me. So people can think that they have a savory palate, they're not really into sweets because sweets can super spike their blood sugar and make them feel nauseous or whatever, they just don't have that sweet taste, but can be getting just as much sugar in not only things that are promoted as healthy um, or things you would never associate sugar in or in things that convert into sugars in our body. And so when you're wanting to get that balance back into your body and you think it's just about sugar, you gotta look at things like this. Now, as uh, we were about to film this, Andy and I were talking and he's like, I was saying, should I eat a bit of the chip? Should I not? And he's like, yeah. He said, that's who you are, that's what I do. And I'm like, yep, that's, I will have chips. These are baked potato chips. They have 60% less fat in it, but it's still a potato chip and it's not a health food. And when I do have them, I'm very aware that I'm not eating something that's healthy for me. But it's that whole philosophy that I have that I'd rather live to 90 with chocolate than 100 without chocolate. It's about finding what it is that you enjoy and trying to find the healthiest version that you can, um, even making them at home. I taught Andy how to make uh, his own potato chips in the oven and he loves them and they were fantastic. So it's not about that you can't live your life without these things unless of course you know yourself and you're at that stage where if you start and have one, you can't stop until the packet's done. If that's where you are, you probably shouldn't, you're not, not really there ready to, um, to get to the point where you can have them in the house. But there are many people who get to the point where they are totally nourishing themselves, you know, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, they're cutting the toxicity out in those areas so that when they do have that snack, it really is just a little, a small thing in context of a whole healthy thing that they're doing. It's part of a concept I call pick your poisons. So the body in any culture has toxic substances. Any natural living plant will have toxins in it. And if you have too much of any one plant, it can be toxic to the body. But what we find is in the healthiest cultures, they might have something that they smoke or something that they eat that kind of alters their their state in some way, uh, it's and it can be actually have a level of toxicity in their, to their body. But if you look at the bulk of what they're doing, you know, their mental life, their spiritual life, their community life, you know, how they're moving their body, how their heart is interacting with other people, it's so healthy that it can actually handle a little bit that little bit of that, and that little bit brings such a kind of a nourishment to their soul that they're willing to take the hit to their body to do that. That's the concept that I call pick your poison. So the body can handle a certain amount, providing the bulk of what you're doing is highly nourishing, energizing, and protective. So the next time you hoe into a bag of chips, or even you're just sampling one, and you've got that kind of, you know, I don't have a sweet tooth thing going on, <laughs> think again, and just assess how much of these savory foods that convert into sugars 
or savory foods that have sugar in them are getting into your body so that when you do make a choice to pick your poisons, you're doing it from an informed place and knowledgeable so that you're not deluding yourself into getting that sugar belly. So yeah, so one chip won't kill you, uh, but a whole pack will cause a problem in your body. Enjoy. So if you've liked this video, please press like, subscribe to our channel, and for more information, simply go to sweetfreedom.ca.